Alrighty, so I've got a little bit of load compression on this uh, Volvo engine here. It's a five cylinder and cylinders three and four um, were around I think 125 PSI if I remember and the rest were 145. So already as a whole they're low, they should be 185. But I'm going to go through and show you guys how to kind of eliminate different causes. So there are a couple main causes of low compression. You have uh, piston rings, intake valve, exhaust valve, and head gasket. And those are your main issues. Um, so the fact that our low cylinders are side by side would maybe lean you towards a head gasket. Uh, we're not losing any coolant though, and no oil is getting in the coolant. So what we're gonna do is uh, pull out the spark plugs, go ahead and pull out all the spark plugs, and we're gonna use a compression um, testing tool um, like this one here. Just pick out the short piece that you need for your threads, have a spark plug. And then we're going to use a um, adjustable air sprayer here and then a piece of 5 16 uh, hose. So there's a little barb underneath here. You can see this is the little piece that was on here. I took it off and I put a piece that had one threaded side with a barb on it. Now we can uh, control how much air is going into the engine. So um, what we want to do is we want to bring the cylinder that we're testing up to top dead center on the compression stroke. So the way you're going to do that um, is either you know use your use your manual to set it where it's at, or you can use a rod like this, put it down in the hole in the engine, and then turn the crank. This one's a 30 millimeter. Turn the crank until the rod goes all the way up to its peak, um, and then uh, you can try to put some air in it. If the air just goes in and comes out one of the other cylinders, you're clearly on the exhaust stroke. So you're gonna have to play with it a little bit. Um, you can also watch down with a flashlight inside there if you have a buddy, of course, and uh, see when it's at top dead center. So anyway, you'll go ahead and thread this down in there and then spray a very, very small amount of air into the engine. If you spray too much or if you just connect full shop air, um, it's going to turn the engine and you're going to have to do it all over again. So just go with a very small amount of air. And what we're trying to do is compress the cylinder um, and then find out where the leak is. So what we're doing here... You can see I've got spark plugs out of two, three, and four. We're testing number four right now. And um, I'm gonna put in a very small amount of air. So let's listen to it. All right, so you can hear the air going in and it's just filling and filling and filling. And what should happen on an engine with good compression is this should turn over. You should see the cams turn because you built up enough compression. So we can sit here, I've already tested with this air, and put in a small amount, and it will not build enough to turn the engine over. So at this point, what you could do is get a glove or a rag or something and put it in the cylinder adjacent to the one you're testing that also has low compression, which would be this one, has about the same compression, and see if you get air coming out of it. If so, then it's pretty confident that you have a head gasket leak between these two cylinders. In this instance, that's not the case. Um, so what you would do next is pull off a vacuum line uh, or something in the intake and pull that off and then do the same thing. Do the glove test or listen to it and see if you can hear any air coming out of it. So let me put some more air in. So you can hear it. Hear the air going in. But there's nothing coming out of the intake. So what that does is it helps us rule out a bad or burnt intake valve. Um, the next step that we're going to do is do it back at the exhaust. Now, unfortunately, um, I don't have someone to help me, so I can't just go back there and listen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a glove and I'm going to duct tape it around the tailpipe. Um, it's a turbo car, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. But what we'll do is just uh, tape it around the tailpipe there since I can't sit back there and listen with the air on, and we'll see if the glove starts to inflate. Because if we have constant air coming in, but not enough to turn the cylinder, it should be leaking out the exhaust valve if it's burnt or bad. Um, sorry, my air compressor kicked on there. So we've got air flowing through here into this cylinder. It's pretty constant. So if the exhaust valve is burnt or bad, this glove should be inflating and it is not doing anything at all. So I'm pretty confident that we do not have a bad exhaust valve. With as much air as, as is going into there, 
we'd be having something coming out there at the back. So the next thing that we're gonna do, um, there's two more places, well, there's only one more place the air could be leaking and that's through the piston rings. So then we can take off the filler cap with the dipstick and listen in there. So it didn't really get a whole lot louder, but I can definitely feel air coming out of here. So we can pretty much say that our loss of compression is going to be almost definitely due to piston rings. Um, it could also be a hole in the piston, which in this case I don't think it is because if I put too much air in here, if I put any more, if I put any more flow in that's going in now, the engine would turn over. So I'm pretty confident there's not a hole in the piston, but our piston rings are worn out. Um, now, probably what I'll do here in just a second, we'll go ahead and put in this spark plug and see if we can build up any more compression. And that will completely eliminate the head gasket. Because this is the only other cylinder that was a little bit low. So, turn this in there. And if we build up any more pressure, If we build up any more pressure, then we'll know we could have a head gasket issue. So there's no air coming out of anywhere else. It doesn't sound like uh, anything has changed. I can definitely feel air coming out of here. And I can smell the oil coming up. So we still have, as you can hear, constant air pressure coming through. It's not coming out of the intake valve. And we'll double check back here. This is definitely not filling up. So anyway, um, I hope that helps anybody out if you're trying to, di to diagnose bad compression or if you think maybe you have symptoms of a burnt valve. Um, it could help you out a little bit because, you know, it sucks to do the whole job thinking you have a burnt valve, pull, pull, the, pull the head off, and then that's not what the case is. You need to pull the whole engine and do piston rings. Um, this is just something I kind of threw together um, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and uh, definitely share any information that you might have down there uh, to help some other people out. So, thanks for watching. I've put a glove over the oil filler cap just to kind of illustrate. Check it out. So, that thing is just, just filling up. So, hopefully that will illustrate the, uh, that point. Alright, now what I've done to simulate a burnt exhaust valve is I put in the other spark plugs um, and I actually turned the crankshaft just enough to where this glove started to fall. So now all of the air we're breathing, we're sending in, as you can st still hear, should be going out the exhaust valve. So this will simulate a burnt exhaust valve. Put the glove back in the tailpipe and check it out. Just blows right back up. So if you have a burnt exhaust valve, that's what you're gonna be looking for there. We could go ahead and do the same thing, turn the crank the other way and open the intake valve and put something right here and the glove would blow up there. But I think I've done enough to um, explain each of those points. And then what you can do is just do the same thing to each cylinder. Uh, maybe next uh, off camera, just for my own knowledge, I'll uh, test a good cylinder and see how that goes. But anyway, 